Hey everybody, good to have you back. So today we have a 21 inch snapper commercial push mower. Uh, I bought this machine new in the, I don't know, maybe late 90s, like maybe 1998. It doesn't have, most of the original parts have been swapped off just as they've worn out over the years. This is a, an engine that I swapped on in 2015. It's a Kawasaki FJ180V-AM22S. Um, it was actually a fairly easy swap. If anybody's interested, I did a write-up a million years ago before I started this channel in the do-it-yourself forums. I can post a link in the description if anybody's interested. But anyway, um, I've been using this machine since 2015 to cut my own grass and occasionally some neighbor's lawns, so it's got some hours on it. And I noticed um, pretty recently, got a bit of an oil leak. So if you look right in here, it's black. And I've washed it off and come back so I know that something's leaking. I think these engines are known for having a sump gasket leak and on these they have kind of an unusual design. Normally the the bottom of the engine bolts in from the bottom but this is what they call a bucket engine. The sump cover is actually on the top. So we're going to pull the cover off and see if we can figure out uh, we're going to pull the crack. Uh, the, sorry guys no coffee yet. Blower housing off to see if we can find the source of this oil leak. Now you might be looking at this and saying, hey, that's not a very bad oil leak, and you'd be right, but what happens is over time, if you let that oil leak go unchecked, the oil will attract debris as it's doing. That debris, I'm just using a 10 millimeter socket here, will keep the heat inside the motor and cause the motor to eventually overheat. So it's kind of a, not a good thing to have. I guess it's time to clean that air cleaner too. Where were we? Just shove the paper towel in there to prevent a lot of nastiness from getting in there. Get that loosened up a little bit. I think this cover just pops right off now. I did loosen up the carburetor mounting bolts just to give us a little bit of leeway here. Pretty easy to work on. Everything's just a 10 millimeter. It's kind of nice. Still holding us. Doesn't seem like anything. Oh, maybe it's the screen under the starter. Yeah. So, I'm trying to remember what holds this on. I guess we have to take the flywheel nut off. It's kind of a weird design. I don't know how crazy I am about that. That looks like maybe an 18 or 18 or so. Maybe bigger than that. Actually, a 17. 18's a little loose. Yeah, 17's much better. Get you guys a little closer. See how strong this impact is. Strong enough. Look at that. Pretty impressive. Maybe I didn't need to take that off? What's holding this together? Oh, maybe it just clips in. Oh well, it doesn't really matter. So here we have our flywheel. We have our sump cover on top right here. You can see the bolts. I'll get you guys a bit closer again. This kind of gives you a better idea of the leak too. So I'm guessing, I mean, there's not much up here on top of the motor. So I'm guessing that this leak is occurring somewhere, sump gasket or below. Do I see it on the other sides? That's really only on that one side. A little bit over here on this side, in the back. So with leaks, you just got to find the highest point where you see oil, because gravity is obviously going to pull it down. And the sump gasket is, I think that's where it's at. So I think this is a pretty common problem on these motors, unfortunately. 
see if these bolts are tight. They should be. Sometimes these back off on some motors, especially Kohlers. I've seen those back off on the Courage series. Yeah, they're not loose. All right, so I think I'm going to order some parts for this thing. I'm going to order a sump gasket. Uh, I'm going to see if there's actually an updated part or an updated kit for this thing that might come with bolts. Um, yeah, I got to put it back together because I got to use this thing today, but we'll pick it up once the parts come in. So a considerable amount of time has passed. Um, I haven't really been using this machine that much only because I got a zero turn, but figured it was time to wrap up this video. So let's remove the flywheel. I think I got you back to where we were when we left off. I got a little pry bar under here. I'm just going to give the, uh, the flywheel bolt a couple whacks with a hammer. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. Maybe not. Stupid me didn't have it turned in enough. Let's try again. That worked. If it doesn't work, they make pullers that'll do this, but finally, I rarely need them. Okay, so interesting observation. Notice how nasty it is around that crank seal there. Get you guys in a little closer. I probably should have taken the flywheel off before I ordered parts because had I seen this, I would have ordered a crank seal too, but I didn't. What I did order was the sump gasket and this breather gasket here. Um, I don't see any evidence that the breather gasket is leaking. Maybe a little bit, let's see. No, that's not bad. I mean, all seals are going to seep, right? Nothing's ever going to get a 100% seal. I'm quite honest, that could just be dust. All right, so I think we're just going to proceed as originally planned. We're going to swap out that sump gasket. Um, I did order an O-ring for the, the dipstick tube as well. Figured that was a good target of opportunity. So let's get these, uh, looks like 10 millimeter bolts off. We'll pull the sump cover. I am going to clean the area up really well, just so we don't get any oil into the uh, any dirt into the crankcase, though. And you do have compressed air. It does look like we have to pull the coil. These bolts and the sump get put back in, I think it's nine newton meters, if I remember correctly. I looked it up before we started this whole project. And one more here. Notice they are not all the same length. Definitely something to keep in mind here. So it looks like our longest bolt goes in here. These kind of all look the same length. Another longer bolt here, but not as long as this one. And the others look kind of, kind of the same. All right, so let's uh, yank this thing off. So they get under here with a pry bar and just gently pry. Try for a couple different areas. You can see it already moving. Let's see if I can just lift it off now. Looks like that'll be the case. Let me get this over on the bench and I'll give you guys a better look. All right, so this is what the inside of the Kawasaki FJ 180 VKAI looks like. Um, you can see you have a nice metal camshaft, which you don't see too much of in small engines. A lot of the Briggs and you know, the lower end ones, they all have plastic cams or plastic cam lobes. This thing I can tell is all proper metal all through and through. Um, yeah, other than that, there's not a whole lot to see here. 
Down there you obviously have the used oil. We will change that when we're done. And here's our gasket. And that came off in a couple pieces, as you can see. I'll spend some time taking the gasket material off of here. Um, and I'll take it off of the sump cover as well. You want to make sure that when you're scraping the gasket, you scrape away from the open crankcase sump. Don't want to get any of this gasket material in there. I'm just using a scraper with a razor blade on it. I'm just kind of working my way, pushing the gasket away from the open crankcase. All right, got that all nice and cleaned up. There's a little, tiny little bit of gasket material left over here by this locating dowel pin, but it's not too much. And 99% of this gasket stuff is off. Normally, I would use some kind of uh, like wire wheel or an abrasive, or light, light abrasive tool to, like one of those, is it roto lock or roto zip or one of those things to clean this up. But again, I don't want to get anything in the crankcase that open this open area in here because that's going to be impossible to get out. I'm looking inside, I don't see anything floating, so I think I've done a pretty good job of keeping everything out of there. Transferred the bolts from the sump cover to the actual crankcase so I know where they come from and I can turn that cover upside down safely without forgetting where the bolts came from. And here's our sump cover. Nice, you can see a big proper ball bearing on the upper side. Again, not something you'll ever see in a a mere mortal small engine. So let's just work at this gasket. Peel it off like we did on the other side. That's your governor gear. That's what helps the engine regulate its speed. That's driven off the camshaft. I changed my mind. We're going to change the breather gasket. are not that tight at all. Kind of kicking myself for not buying a crank seal. But what can you do? All right, so we got that open. Let me um, take out the dipstick. Another 10 millimeter bolt. take this sump over to the parts cleaner and just give it a good washing. Okay, I got the cover all nice and cleaned up. Lay down some clean paper towels. So now we have our dip, dipstick tube o-ring. Thanks to the folks at Parts Tree, not a sponsor. Have our breather gasket. and our sump gasket. But again, if I was doing this job again, just because I'm in here anyway, would have done a crank seal, but I didn't, so I'm not going to. Let's do our breather gasket first. Good, we'll check them manually with a screwdriver. Again, they were not tight to begin with.
Okay, onto the dipstick tube o ring. back on easier. Okay, got that lubed up a little bit of engine oil. There we go. Our cover is all done. Probably will throw a little bit of oil in that bearing just for good measure. A little bit of oil on our governor over here. Got the proper bolts transferred back into the holes from the engine. You may be tempted to not want to use a gasket for this at all and just use RTV or something. On some engines you can do that. I would caution you against that though because sometimes the gasket is used to space out the crankshaft. If you go and do that, you're altering the crankshaft clearance. That thing heats up. The crank doesn't have enough room to grow. When it heats up, it breaks. I've seen it happen before. So here's our gasket. I'm going to lay this on the machine. Perfect. And we'll just plop our cover back on. I am going to lube up that crank seal a little bit though. All right, folks, here goes nothing. And you may have to rock this thing back and forth for the governor here to sit. Do not force it. Do not use those bolts to draw down the cover. You will break something. Once your cover is fully seated, then you can draw down the bolts. As you can see, this one is not fully seated yet. Might need to rotate the crank a little bit to move the cam in a different position so that you can get that governor gear on because that might be what's holding us up. There we go. I'm just turning the blade a little bit. You see the cover sink. Gap is gone now. Pretty easy. Now we can safely tighten those bolts. Again, they go to nine newton meters. I'm just going to run them in finger tight with the impact gun. Not going to go crazy. Probably a sequence they have to be tightened in, but I'm not really paying attention to that right now. And I may regret that if this leaks again. Okay, let's get our torque wrench, nine newton meters. Okay, nine newton meters works out to about 80 inch pounds. So I've got my torque wrench set to 80 inch pounds. I go in a crisscross manner. Make sure everything's nice and tight. Didn't miss any bolts. Okay. 
Okay, we're good. Time to put our flywheel back on. Putting the key back in, make sure you don't lose the key or drop it. I'm just gonna place our flywheel back on the crankshaft. Sometimes the keys like to walk around when you do this. Make sure the key doesn't fall out. That's the most important thing. Okay, we're gonna get our coil back on. Engine's not gonna run very well without that. You have to set the gap properly. I have to look that up, but normally it's like the thickness of a business card or so. Okay, Kawasaki wants 12 thousandths on this engine, so we'll uh, get that dialed in. Let's turn our magnets up. Oh, it's still a little too loose. So what I like to do when I'm doing this is I'll tighten the bolt uh, on the coil just to kind of, not really super tight, but just enough to hold it in place so the magnets can draw it. And then from there, I'll insert the feeler gauge and push the coil into the feeler gauge. So kind of like Actually, these magnets don't really seem to stick out at all. It makes it easier. Just use any old place in the flywheel then. Just snug down these bolts. If there is a torque spec for these, I don't know what it is. And then rotate to make sure there's no interference. Everything seems fine. Wonderful. Now we can start putting things back together. Cover doesn't want to sit flush. Okay, that was a pretty easy problem to fix. Turns out that the, the flywheel was just, just was not drawn down all the way, and that was keeping the, the housing from, uh, from setting properly. So now I just need to find the screws and install them. Got one here. here and a third probably flew across the shop somewhere we'll get those in real quick Starter back on. Cool. Let's turn her over and see if we feel any interference anywhere. Seems just fine to me. Got everything back together, got the engine all cleaned up with some simple green. Took the time to clean the carburetor too while I was at it. Let's start it up, let it run. Um, we'll dump the oil and put fresh oil and a new filter on. So let's turn the gas on. This is a long fuel line. Um, I had to move the gas tank from down here to up to on the handlebars for the, the fuel tank to fit on the snapper. This engine's bigger than the one that was on here. So let's do full choke, give her a tug and see what happens. Alright, 
that's warm enough. Go ahead and dump the oil now. I put one of these little drains at connectors on here years ago to make oil changes easier. This thing is hard as a rock though. I'm amazed it doesn't leak. Dump the oil out. I think that's enough. Oil came out looks just fine. Let's put the drain cap back on. Okay, old oil is out. Let's get the filter out. Never really understood why, but Kawasaki switched to a plastic oil filter housing on this engine. It's kind of the stupidest thing I've ever seen, but why would you do that? I guess it's a little bit cheaper. Put in a fresh Wix 51394. A little bit of oil inside the filter, but not too much since this thing gets installed almost upside down. Okay, new filter is installed, just got to fill her back up with oil. Throw in, was it maybe a quarter or so of 10W30? That should be enough. Start her up again, circulate the filter oil a little bit, and then we will uh, check it, see if it's still good. Should be long enough. Check our oil level one final time and we'll call this video a wrap. I'm gonna add a tiny bit right just above the add mark. Kind of expected because again the filter was not full. Perfect. Right at the full mark. All right, guys, that's a wrap. So that is how you replace a sump gasket in a Kawasaki FJ180V KAI. Um, it's a pretty common problem on these motors for some reason. I don't really know why, but it is. Um, very, little, very little skill required. You could do this as long as you have basic hand tools. Anyway, found this video helpful. Please subscribe. Stay safe. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.